My name is Sophia. I've been married for 10 years to my husband, whom I've known since we were students. Our two children are now in elementary school, and we are expecting our third child next spring. I continue to work after marriage, but it is difficult to work full-time while raising children. I talked to my boss about it, and now I'm working shorter hours. I will take time off when I give birth next spring. After that, I plan to take maternity leave. I'm very grateful for the generous benefits package and the flexibility they give me. Recently, I've been able to attend meetings remotely and work from home. I'm working with the company to prioritize my home life for a while after my leave ends, while also gradually returning to work. They've been very good to me, and I'm trying not to lose my work sense so that I can contribute to the company again once I've settled down with childcare. Of course, I don't want to neglect not only my work, but also my home. My husband works in a busy office with lots of travel and overtime, but he still tries to help me with housework and childcare as much as possible. Sometimes get sick when he is busy, but thanks to his understanding, he has helped me a lot. And next year, I will start living with my mother-in-law. She lives alone in a small apartment now. My father-in-law got sick and was hospitalized soon after my husband. And I got married, and he eventually passed away. At that time, we talked about moving in with my mother-in-law, but my mother-in-law was more reserved about it, so we stopped talking about it. However, after my father-in-law passed away, it seemed to be hard for her to continue living alone in a big house with lots of memories. So my mother-in-law decided to sell the house and rent an apartment. I suggested that her apartment should be near our house so that both of us can come to the apartment immediately if something happened to her. Now she is within easy reach of us. I often visited my mother-in-law at her apartment with my children so that she would not feel lonely. My mother-in-law and I have a very good relationship, at least I think so. I also send money to my mother-in-law every month to help her in some way. Even though we're both working, it is not easy to send her $1,400 from our family income with children. Still, I wanted to help in some way. It, it must be difficult for you and my son to raise three children while working together. As long as I'm able-bodied, I'll do whatever I can to help, so please don't hesitate to call on me. We live close to each other anyways. When I reported the birth of our third child, my mother-in-law expressed her concern for me. I told my husband that I felt sorry to ask her so often, even though we live close to each other. Should we take this opportunity to ask you to move in with us? We have an extra room for my mom, so it should work out. He suggested that his mother move in with us. My mother-in-law is a senior housewife. It is reassuring for me to have someone whom I can ask for advice or help when something happens. Besides, my mother-in-law would be lonely to live alone for the rest of her life. I thought it was a very good idea to live together. I see. Shall I suggest it to her then? And when I talked to my mother-in-law, she accepted it gladly. And so it was decided that we would live with my mother-in-law, and I was really looking forward to my new life starting next year. 
However, my expectation soon turned into a feeling of depression. My mother-in-law, who had no one to talk to after the death of her husband, joined a knitting circle to be more social with her neighbors. Actions of tempers. Once a week, they get together and chat with their friends while working with their hands. She says that this time is very good for her, who lives alone as it is good distraction for her. She laughed and said that she was less depressed now that she had someone to talk to. I thought it was very good that my mother-in-law had friends around her with whom she could talk to. Cont However, my mother-in-law changed little by little under the influence of those friends. She told me that there were many elderly women of the same age as her in the knitting circle. So the topics of conversation were mainly complaining about their husbands and quarreling with their wives or bragging about their grandchildren. I thought my mother-in-law was a kind and gentle person. It, but maybe it was because she had never complained or said bad things, and these topics seemed fresh and enjoyable to her. She was gradually influenced by her peers of the same age, who told her stories of how they used to bully their daughter-in-law, or how they harassed their daughter-in-laws because they were angry. Just in the beginning, one of the ladies in the group was lecturing her daughter-in-law because she was not doing her chores well enough. But you do it so well that I don't have to be angry with you, and I feel so blessed. She would happily tell me stories like that. But then, she gradually began to harass me. We will start living together at the beginning of next year. We had planned to move in at a time when the contract of my mother-in-law's apartment would be up for renewal and when I would give birth, so that we would be able to move in at a time when things th would not be too hectic. Recently, however, my mother-in-law has been frequently visiting our house even before we moved in together, under the guise of helping out at home. It's in reality, she didn't help me with anything, but just watched me like a devilish instructor and gave me a hard time for doing housework. That's no good. Weren't you taught to drain the dishes before putting them in the basket? Putting them in the basket? You've been a housewife for 10 years. You should be able to do that. Excuse me? We don't know if Emma is allergic to shrimp yet, so you can't just casually feed her shrimp. What if she's allergic to shrimp? Hey Dot Sophia! She started nagging me about housework childcare, and all sorts of things. One day, while I was vacuuming, my mother-in-law came to my house. Recently, she would just let herself in without knocking or ringing the doorbell. She came into the living room that day without saying a word, sat down on the sofa and started looking at old photo albums. I knew it was the right time to clean the house because my children were visiting their friends' houses. That the album in my mother-in-law's hand was something I didn't recognize much. I didn't care too much about it, thinking that she was looking at me and my husband's childhood albums in the back of the bookshelf. It was hard to clean when she sits on the sofa forever. And to tell the truth, I felt uncomfortable that my mother-in-law was just sitting there but she didn't care and continued to turn the pages of the album leisurely. I was getting a little annoyed with her, who didn't care about me who was cleaning. It was at that time. My mother-in-law looked at the photo in the album and at me, 
And then she smiled wickedly and said, Sophia, you look like your mother. You looked cute when you were a child. But now you look just like your mother in this picture. Tired and ugly, this picture, tired and ugly. Tired and ugly, begs Takeley to his swords hit me hard. I have two elementary school children and another precious life in my belly. I have to go to work for a little while longer before I have to take maternity leave, and even then. I'm doing housework on my days off and doing the best I can in my own way. And she calls me tired, worn out, and ugly. It was a terrible insult to speak ill of not only me, but also my mother. I've reached the end of my patience. Okay, I understand what you're trying to say. Ixapakwi and sexually, I'd like to have a word with you sometime. I said to my mother-in-law in a low voice with a sharp edge to it. My mother-in-law flinched for a moment but still maintained her posture so as not to show any sign of agitation. It... What is it? What do you want to talk about? She responded as if it was nothing. She responded as if it was nothing. Actions, I was the one who said the worst things to her, but she didn't seem to care and didn't want to apologize. I was disappointed in such a mother-in-law from the bottom of my heart. I can't take it anymore. But I felt that what will happen from now on is not only my mother-in-law and my problem. Let's have a proper discussion about the future with my husband. I put on my best smile as much as I could. I guess my smile scared her. My mother-in-law kept silent and her face was drawn. The next Sunday, when my husband was home, I asked my mother-in-law to visit our home. I told my husband my intention beforehand. My husband also had his own opinion about my mother-in-law's recent situation, and he was indignant with me when he heard my story. I told him that if it was too much for him to say, I would say it directly to her. My resolve was unshakable now. My mother-in-law opened the door and came into the living room. She looked like the kind and gentle mother-in-law I had known for a long time. But I know that her heart has already changed completely. This talk might get long, but I'm going to get straight to the point. The plans of living together next year are cancelled. Also, I will no longer be sending you the $1,400 a month that I have been sending you for the past several years. That is our consensus. I said to my mother-in-law in no uncertain terms. What? What do you mean? We didn't talk about that, did we? My mother-in-law's eyes widened in surprise. I could see her body was shaking. She must have been upset. Of course she is. I know well enough that I am saying very terrible things to her. But I already gone beyond the limit of my patience. Um, Sophia told me what she did. And says, um, as does from wife, what you've done to her is too much, but I told her that I thought you could support Sophia. That's why I asked you to move in with us. She's going to have another baby and she's going through a lot and I'm not going to be able to support her all by myself. That's why I thought it would be reassuring to have you by her side. Of course. I'm also worried about leaving you on, so I thought it would be good for us all to live together when you think about your old age. And yet lately, you've, you've been badging Sophia and saying horrible things about her. Um, I can't live with someone like that. 
Given it is my own mother who raised me since I was a child. Um. He looked straight at his mother and said this. Are you going to abandon your mother? You're going to abandon your old mother like this? I thought her words were very true. I thought her words were very terrible. She was not the kind of person who would say such words, so I felt so sad. My husband and I have no intention of abandoning you. It's just that the way you've been treating me lately has been so terrible. I just wanted you to understand that I can't live with you anymore if you treat me like this and I don't even want to send you money. $1,400 a month is not an easy amount to come up with, you know? Even so, we have been doing everything we can to make sure that your mother-in-law would never have to worry about money. I just felt sad that our feelings were trampled on. I prayed that my words would reach my mother-in-law. But my prayer did not reach her. Sophia, I thought you were a wonderful wife. I was listening to my friends in the knitting circle say all kinds of nasty things about their own daughter-in-laws, and I was thinking that you were a very nice young lady. But I guess I was wrong. You're just as bad as all the other wives. You can't do the housework, you can't take care of the children, and you're not at all attentive to your parents. I'm deeply disappointed in you. Joshua, you should leave your wife like this. I can ask my friends in my knitting circle to introduce you to a better young lady and start over. As poor ex six Yuri to be happier that way. But Chen saw my husband and I looked at each other in surprise at the outrageous story my mother-in-law had just told us. And then his face turned into a horribly angry expression. Come on. Um, I thought you would understand if I told you. But no matter what I say, you don't understand me anymore. I'm the one who's heartbroken for you. I have nothing more to say to you. I'm gonna ask you now as you leave. Oh, don't ever show your face in front of us again. I want you to do anything that would interfere with our happy life together. Is that I'm gonna cut off all contact with you, at least until you, you just, until you understand the meaning of these words. I won't leave you at all send you any more money. I want you to think long and hard about the implications of our decision. When he said this, he kicked my mother-in-law out of the house. I'd never seen him so angry. She was yelling something at the door, but when we didn't respond at all, she gave up and left. We never saw her again. Soon after, I went on maternity leave and gave birth to my third child. My husband helped me with housework and childcare in his spare time from work, so I didn't have to feel the emotional burden. While I was on maternity leave, my mother, who lives far away, came to see me several times. I was glad that my children called her grandma and missed her. But to me and my husband, my mother-in-law is no longer our family, but to my children, she is still a kind grandmother. If I do, it will be when they are older. But my mother is also a grandmother. She used to refrain from visiting us because of the distance and my mother-in-law's presence, but from now on. I hope she will be able to come and go without any worries. I also thought I would visit my parents' house more often with my children. Relationships are a strange thing. No matter how well you think things are going, the slightest misunderstanding can destroy the relationship in a blink of an eye. The 
Like like my mother-in-law, it can be difficult to continue a relationship with a person who changes at the slightest opportunity. That's why I'm so grateful to my husband, my children, my parents, my family, also my friends and acquaintances around me. I try to treat everyone with love and respect. Because we are human beings, sometimes we have trouble communicating with others, and we may be misunderstood. But if we care about others, we can resolve misunderstandings and restore relationships. I will cherish my relationships with people. And for now, I will work together with my husband to raise the precious children we have. I promised myself that I would teach my children to cherish the people you have and be grateful for the connections you make.